Hi there! This video is meant to be instructional and educational and is not intended to replace the tenant from reviewing and reading the original lease and addenda and presenting any questions that they may have to the property manager or assignee. This video is also not intended to be all-inclusive and the tenant is encouraged to read all documents and addenda prior to signing and initialing the original documents. As we begin, there are a couple of documents that I'm going to give you that will not require your signature. They're just for you to have and use as part of your occupancy to the property. Move-in inspection form. So the first thing that I'm going to give you is the move-in inspection form. This form is very important to your file. What you will need to do is go through the home and note down the condition of the home as you received it on move-in. We suggest you go through the home and turn everything on and make sure everything is working or in good order. If it's not, you would make note of this on the form. What we do with this form is we place it into your file and then when you move out, we pull this form out and review it against the damages looking for things that were pre-existing. We're going to give you about 10 days so that you have a chance to go through everything. If you fail to turn this back into our office in 10 days, we will take the stance that you are saying you found the home in perfect condition and any damage that we find at move out could be charged to you. So you really want to be sure that you are very thorough with this form. Please also note that we do not create any work orders from this form, so if you find anything at move-in that you would like addressed, please be sure to contact the maintenance department for a service request. Bed bug disclosure. This form also does not require your signature, but the Department of Real Estate requires that we provide this form for you. We are not indicating that there has been or that there are now any bed bugs in the home, but we are required to give every occupant this disclosure. This form outlines the bed bug epidemic, how you can get them, and how you can avoid getting them. We are prohibited from renting out any property that has an active infestation of bed bugs, and to the best of our knowledge, there hasn't been any bed bugs in this home. Emergency contact numbers. This is a form outlining maintenance emergencies and after hours calls. We have maintenance coverage that is 24 7, so if there's a maintenance issue or something breaks in your home after hours that is a true emergency, we would want you to call right away. This form is designed to help you determine what we consider a true emergency. If it's 2 a.m. in the morning and you happen to notice that your garbage disposal is not working, we would not consider that to be an emergency. You would call that in the next day. But if you have a flood, no heat or cooling, depending on the season, you'll want to call right away. Do not call our office first if you should be calling fire or police departments. In those cases, 911 is your emergency call. Office Staff Contacts This form is designed as a helpful list of who works in the office, what their role is, and a brief description of what they do, so that if you call the office you know who to speak with during business hours. If you know who you need to speak with, you can bypass the directory and press the extension of the person you need to speak with. Signature Required Forms Now comes the forms that will require your signatures. Rental Payments Options Form what this form does is tell you the different options available to you for paying your rent. You can mail in a personal check, cashier's check, or money order. Or if you're in the area, you can drop into the office and pay the rent during our business hours or drop it through our night slot. Or you can pay online through our website, which is how most people are paying today. If you pay on the 1st, our system will date stamp it so that we know that it was paid on time. If you pay after midnight of the 1st and it rolls over to the 2nd of the month, the system will note that and it will not accept your payment without the appropriate late fee as well. So just know that there is a precise cutoff time and date. This form just outlines exactly how to do that, so please sign and date this form where indicated. Lease Addendum for Pest Control This form is a lease addendum for pest control. Routine pest control to just maintain and manage pests you would take care of on your own. If there is a situation that is greater than just the routine spiders, crickets, and ants, for example, a beehive shows up on your property, or scorpions, or something that is just not normal pests, you would call our office to report that, and if the owner covers the treatment costs, you agree to cooperate with the pest control vendor, for example, if you need to leave the property for a couple of hours while they fog the property, or clear out under the sinks and cabinets so that they can spray behind it to get the maximum benefit, you agree to cooperate. Please sign and date this form where indicated. Mold and Mildew Addendum As we live in a desert or drier climate, we don't typically experience mold or mildew situations, but this document states that if there is a water leak in a poorly ventilated area, like under a kitchen or a bathroom sink, 
or a leak behind a wall or cabinet where no airflow can get to it, or if you bathe or shower and you notice it gets really steamy, that you will let us know immediately if you see any kind of water leaks and that you will run an exhaust fan or open a bathroom window, etc. Mold is not a covered item on most insurance policies anymore, so we would rather catch something when it is still just a small area rather than having to rip out walls and cabinets and having to replace pipes, etc. So this document states that you agree and will do your best to make sure that you don't create or allow a mold or mildew situation to happen, and if you do find one, you will let us know. Please sign and date this form where indicated. Lease Addendum Our lease agreement is a standard lease agreement from AAR that most property management companies are using for leasing properties. But it doesn't leave sufficient room to write in requirements that our company needs to include that are maybe unique from other companies. It is referenced in one of the lease agreement pages that this lease addendum is considered part of the actual lease agreement as well. Let me go over this briefly with you because these specific lease items are important to know. A. Because you are moving into an individual home, not a community apartment, if you happen to get locked out of the property or lose your keys, you will need to call a locksmith directly. B. With plumbing problems, if there is a plumbing problem on the property and the plumber determines that the repair was tenant-caused, such as something in the disposal or drain or commode that shouldn't have gone down there blocking it up, and the plumber determines there was misuse, you will be billed back for that repair. If there is something that breaks because of normal use and no fault of the tenant, the landlord slash owner will be responsible and pay the invoice. C. We encourage and in fact it is a responsibility of each tenant to change the AC filters on a monthly basis to ensure that the system operates properly. If you are having problems with your AC system and your vendor finds a heavy pile of dust or dirt on the AC filter, this could be a contributing factor in the operation of the AC and you could be invoiced for all or part of the bill. Please make sure that you stay on top of the filters and change them monthly. D. Smoke alarms are in the property and we want to make sure that they are operational at all times. If they start beeping or do not work when tested, please call us and let us know so that we can get those fixed. E. We encourage you to have renter's insurance. The homeowner will have insurance that will cover the structure and liability only. So if there is a flood or fire or some kind of disaster, it will only cover the structure and none of your personal items or content will be covered. So you want to have renter's insurance to cover you in that case. You are not required by law to have it, but we highly recommend it for your safety and liability. F. Legal Notice Should we have to serve you a legal notice for anything that is restricted on the lease, we would be required to send you a notice through certified mail or a process server and there would be a $35 legal notice fee charged to your account. G. Whenever you find yourself needing to move out, you are required to give a 30-day notice to vacate. Notices are given at the beginning of the month and expire at the end of the same month and must be in writing. Even if you are on a month-to-month -month contract, the same applies. H. The move-in condition form is required to be submitted within the first 10 days of your new lease and very important to have that turned in. I. There is a no smoking allowance for the inside of the property. J. A material breach of the contract is something that can result in the termination of your occupancy. So if you receive a notice of a material breach from our office, we encourage you to call us immediately and discuss what the action was and see if it can be worked out. Many times the tenant does not even realize that there was an issue and we may be able to work it out. If you ignore these notices and do not respond to them, that could result in a loss of your occupancy to the property. So if you receive a notice, call us immediately to discuss. K. Maintenance request service fee is a minimum of $45 and that is charged on tenant-caused damages. If something breaks or just stops working that is no fault of the tenant, then there is no charge to you. But if you break something or misuse something that causes it to break, then the minimum vendor fee is the $45 and we would pass that charge on to you. L. Rent-ready condition. When you move out of the property and after giving your 30-day notice, we want you to remember to deliver the property back over to us in the same condition as when you received it, other than normal wear and tear items. You will need to have it cleaned and you will need to have the carpets professionally cleaned and the copy of the paid receipt submitted to us at move out. M. Non-critical maintenance requests. We need to talk about that for a minute. He is not required to make changes or complete in a request that are not critical. This typically comes into play for cosmetic-type requests. 
An example would be if a room did not have a ceiling fan when you rented and you later asked him to install one, this would be an item that is not critical and he could decline the request. Maintenance Responsibility Instructions What this document states is that you agree to use the property and services as intended. If anything breaks, we want you to call us as soon as you notice that it is broken or not working instead of continuing to use it or not call us and defer the maintenance until you have moved out. We want to always make sure that you are comfortable in the home and that things are working and if someone doesn't call something in on a timely basis, the item may break beyond repair. So we want to be able to fix something early rather than let it continue to get worse or irreparable. HOA Compliance Requirements If the home is located in a community that has an HOA, this document states that you will conform and follow any HOA rules and regulations established by the HOA. Generally, this means that you will bring in the garbage cans on the trash days and make sure that you have no weeds in the yard or broken down vehicles in the driveway, or your holiday decorations are removed promptly after the holidays. Those are the three issues that we receive the most notices about, but there may be other requirements that you need to adhere to as well. This addendum is also incorporated into the lease agreement as well. Please sign and date where indicated. Please initial on the front page and do a full signature on the second page where indicated. The Lease Agreement The lease agreement that is used by Paramount is constructed by the Arizona Association of Realtors and is widely considered to be a comprehensive lease, not including any addenda that may be included and attached separately. On this first page of the lease, it reads that you are entering into a lease agreement between ourselves and the ownership of the property. The next line is for the names of all occupants in the property that are of legal age and older. All parties are equally responsible to the terms of this agreement. You will next see the property address of the property you are leasing. Please confirm that this address is correct and accurate. Right below that indicates the personal property in the home for your use. This typically refers to appliances or other items if that box is checked as well. The next area indicates who will actually be living in the home. This line, 18, indicates that documents that are incorporated into the lease agreement such as the move-in, move-out condition forms, etc., Line 20 says that the lease agreement will be starting on the date noted. The lease is typically a 12-month lease unless noted otherwise. So the start date is noted here and the ending lease date is noted here. Unless either party states otherwise, this lease will automatically become a month-to-month -month occupancy following the expiration date. You will have deposited earnest funds as noted on line 30 either in cash or by credit card online. Those funds are held in our trust account until you have moved in, and then we will be applying those funds to your full move-in funds on the lease. Please initial on the bottom of the lease agreement where noted. On the second page of the lease agreement, this page talks about the monies required on the lease for the move-in. This is the rent amount stated on line 45, the city sales tax is noted on line 46, and this is the total of rents that are due each month. Our office address is stated in line 45 and 47 should you be mailing in the rent to our office. Rent is due on the first day of the month. It is considered late on the second day of the month, and there is a $10 per day late fee if paid late. Should there ever come a point in time where it appears that you are not going to make the rent payment on time, we would encourage you to call our accounting department. We have and use what is called a promise to pay form. It does not stop any late fees from accruing, but what it will do is stop us from sending you a five-day notice and calling you to inquire about the rent, as we now have an agreement in place letting us know when we can expect the rental payment. If you fail to do a promise to pay form, then you will be sent the five-day notice for non-payment of rent, which is the first step in the eviction process. In this area, communication is key. Line 54 through 56 indicate that if we do accept a promise to pay agreement from you, it does not change the due dates of any future payments, nor are we waiving the right to insist all future payments be made on the first of the month. This next area talks about prorated rents. If you're not moving into the property exactly on the first of the month, there is a prorated amount of rent that is due. The prorated amount of rent is due from your move-in date through the end of the month. If your move-in date is the first of a month, this area will be NA or zero. Here is a breakdown of the funds required to move in. First is your initial month's rent payment on line 66, your security deposit on line 69, line 70 and 71 would be for any additional deposit your landlord was requiring. 
Lines 73, 74, 76 would be any non-refundable fees your landlord would require. Line 78 is your application and administration fee. Line 80 is the sales tax fee, all adding up to your total move-in funds needed on line 81, minus the funds you have deposited already as stated on line 82. Line 83 is the amount that is due today at move-in. Line 84 indicates that we are going to take your security deposit and hold it in a separate account, so that you know that the owner is not holding the security deposit. It is held in our trust account for the duration of the lease or until you vacate the property. Please initial at the bottom of this page where indicated. On this page of the lease agreement, page 3, lines 85 through 90 speak to the security deposit and outline that if the premises is not delivered back to the landlord in clean and undamaged condition, the landlord may retain all or part of the deposit to offset any expense required to restore the property to rent-ready condition. Lines 90 through 100 outline the credit slash background check. It states that we charge $35 per adult for a background check and the various items we are researching for the purpose of determining if our rental qualifying criteria are met and that a lease agreement can be extended. Lines 101 through 106 pertain to pets on the property. If you are bringing an authorized pet on the property, that information will be documented here. If there are no pets, line 102 will be checked and the remaining areas will be blank. Lines 107 through 114 outline the keys and or remotes associated with the property and how many you will be receiving. These are the keys and remotes that will need to be returned to us when you vacate and it further states that you agreed to pay for any keys not returned at move out. Lines 115 and 116 indicate the tenant is responsible for all utilities. If there are any exceptions, they are noted in this area. Lines 117 through 119 will address the homeowners association if applicable. Note that all properties are not located in an HOA community, and if yours is, that information will be noted in this area. Lines 120 through 128 address miscellaneous maintenance items. Please look at what is checked and make note of what your responsibilities are to those items. Lines 129 through 146 speak to upkeep of the premises. This indicates that you have been given an opportunity to inspect the property and note the condition of the home at the time of move-in and that you agree to maintain the home, follow any rules and regulations set forth by the landlord or management. Lines 147 through 158 address rules and laws and it states you agree to follow any rules and laws known and that you agree this extends to any guests you have on the property. Line 159 is where you will initial that you agree. Lines 160 through 166 address the crime-free provision which states that while you live on the property, you will not buy, sell, distribute, or manufacture any illegal substance or engage in any illegal activity, and if you are found to be doing so, it will result in the termination of your occupancy and you will have to move from the property. Lines 167 through 171 refer to the swimming pool barrier regulations. If the premises contain a pool, the tenant agrees that they have investigated all rules and regulations with regard to barrier regulations and agree to comply. The tenant agrees to indemnify the landlord and brokers from any and all liability with regard to barrier regulations and are using the pool at their own risk. Line 172 is where you will initial that you agree. Lines 173 through 184 refer to the lead-based paint disclosure. If the home was constructed prior to 1978 in its original construction, it may have been painted with lead-based paint. If this is the case, we will have emailed you a lead-based paint pamphlet for your review and line 178 will be checked and you will initial on line 181. If the home was constructed after 1978, no lead-based paint was used and line 183 will be checked and you will initial line 184. If line 178 was checked, you should also look for the additional documents in your forms for the lead-based paint disclosure and initial and sign where indicated. If line 183 is checked, your packet will not contain that document and it is not required. Lines 185 through 187 will indicate smoke detectors in the unit and lines 188 through 190 will address carbon monoxide detectors in the home. You will need to initial the bottom of this page in the right corner. Page 5. Line 191 through 192 addresses fire sprinklers in the home. 
Lines 193 through 195 cover alterations and improvements, and this states the tenant shall not make any alterations or changes to the home without the landlord's approval. You're welcome to hang pictures, but if you paint or do anything along those lines, you may have chargers at move out to return the home to its original condition. Lines 196 through 198, Renter's Insurance. Tenant assumes all liability for personal injury, property damage, or loss. Therefore, we highly recommend renter's insurance for your personal content and belongings. Lines 199 through 204 discuss access to the property. This area indicates that the tenant will not withhold access to the property for repairs and or inspection and that the landlord will not abuse the right to inspect and visit the property. It also states that we will not enter the home without warning unless there is an emergency. We also want to let you know that if you report a service issue, the vendor will call you to make arrangements to visit the property and that you need to make someone available to let them in to complete their tasks. We never give a vendor a key to your home. Lines 205 through 208, Vacating Obligations. Here we would like to let you know that you are required to give a written 30-day notice if you intend to vacate. Notices are given on the first of a month to expire at the end of a month, even if your lease is now month to month. You are required to return the home in the same condition you received it, and you will be required to have any carpeted areas cleaned by a third-party vendor and to provide us with a receipt when you turn in your keys. You must keep the utilities on until our inspection is complete and provide us with a forwarding address. A statement of your deposit account will be sent to you by mail and it can take up to 14 business days. Lines 209 through 211 refer to what happens if a home you are renting goes into foreclosure. This indicates that if we receive notice the home is going into foreclosure, we will notify you right away of any pending action. In many cases, those notices are sent to or posted at the property, and should you receive such a notice, you will notify us immediately upon receipt. Lines 212 through 214 speak to the death of a tenant. Should something like this occur, we will contact whomever you listed on your application as your emergency contact. Please be sure to keep that information updated with us if it changes. Lines 215 through 216, Breach. If a breach occurs, this states the non-breaching party may pursue any remedy at its disposal. Lines 217 through 219, the prevailing party in any dispute or claim arising out of or relating to this agreement may impose its legal fees onto the non-prevailing party. Lines 220 through 224, Service Members Relief Act states what will occur if anyone on this lease is a military member and receives orders for longer than 90 days to a new base or station. Should this occur, please call us immediately. Lines 225 through 229, Copies and Counterparts, indicates that we will be giving you a copy of everything you have signed today and that copies of the lease agreement are treated as originals. Lines 230 through 232, Entire Agreement. This lease and all addenda constitutes the entire agreement and supersedes any written or oral agreements made. It can only be modified in writing. Line 233 indicates we performed the duties of this lease agreement and any obligations to it in a timely manner. Lines 234 through 236, No Verbal Waivers. They must be in writing and signed by landlord. Lines 237 through 239, this lease is subordinate to any future ground leases and to any modifications or extensions. Line 240 indicates that we are able to advise the public that the home has been leased and for how much. We do not give out tenants' personal information with regard to the lease. Line 241 indicates that we will follow federal and state fair housing laws. Please initial on the bottom of this page in the right corner. Page 6. Lines 242 through 244 indicate that the lease is written in fair language to benefit both parties, the landlord and the tenant. Lines 245 through 247. If any part of this lease is found by a court to be invalid, illegal, or vague, the tenant and the landlord agree that the offending area may be modified or stricken by the court to make it valid, but that all other areas of the agreement remain in full effect. Lines 250 through 253 indicate that all notices will be in writing and shall be delivered to our office unless you have been directed to deliver them to another address. 
Lines 254 through 270 refer to any other items that are particular to this lease but are not outlined in any other area. Please be sure to read this section and ask any questions before leaving today. Lines 271 through 277. You are entitled to a free copy of the Landlord-Tenant Act, which can be downloaded from the Secretary of State's website or the Arizona Department of Housing. You are reminded that you have 10 days to return your completed move-in inspection forms. We would also like to remind you that you should get renter's insurance if you are concerned about your personal belongings. Lines 278 through 282 indicates that you are holding harmless the landlord and owners and brokers from any injury or loss on the property, which extends to any guests you have on the property. Please initial line 284 that you agree. Line 285 through 289 indicate this becomes a binding contract on the date and time on line 287. Please initial at the bottom of this page in the right-hand corner. Lines 292 through 297 indicate the name and information of the real estate agent who helped you find and lease this property. Please complete your full signatures on line 300. Line 301 and 302 is the address of the property you are renting. Line 303 through 309 indicates the name of the broker working on behalf of the owner-landlord. Line 310 through 318 indicate the property manager for the property you are renting. In most cases, we are the property manager. However, if you will be dealing ongoing with the owner directly, their information will be in this area. Please initial at the bottom of this page in the right-hand corner. Page 8. Line 331 is the actual name of the owner, and lines 332 through 334 is the property manager information. You will just need to initial the bottom right-hand corner of this page, which is also the last page of the agreement. We will be collecting the document now that shows your compliance with having the utilities placed in your name and collecting your final payment due to complete the move-in. We thank you for choosing Paramount Management and Realty. Our highest goal is to provide a comfortable and safe location for you to call home. We make every effort to respond timely to your occupancy needs. Please know that we are here to assist you in any way. We hope that you find your occupancy and stay with Paramount Management and Realty is a pleasant and rewarding experience.